Good afternoon. I'm Amy Yeager of the Association of Research Libraries, and I'd like to welcome you to this afternoon's webinar, IPED Survey Definition Changes Based on Academic Library Community Input. There are a few announcements before we begin. All participants have entered the conference in listen-only mode. We invite you to join the conversation by typing questions in the chat box in the lower left corner of your screen. The speakers will answer questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded on Tuesday, November 3, 2015. ARL will share the presentation slides and a link to the recording in the next week. Today we will hear from IPED's program staff as well as members of the joint ARL-ACRL task force on aligning IPED's academic libraries component definitions with established practices. Our presenters are Mary Jane Petrowski, Associate Director of the Association of College and Research Libraries, Martha Kiralidou, Senior Director of Statistics and Service Quality Programs at the Association of Research Libraries, and Chair of the NISO Z39.7 Data Dictionary. Also joining us are Bob Fox, Dean of Libraries at the University of Louisville and Chair of the ARL Assessment Committee, and Bob Dugan, Dean of Libraries at the University of West Florida and co-chair of the ACRL Academic Library Trends and Statistics Survey Editorial Board. We'll also hear from Christopher Cody, who's senior researcher at the American Institutes for Research and the IPED Survey Director for Academic Libraries and Admissions. And perhaps joining us later for the uh, question and answer session will be Bao Li, who's Associate Education Research Scientist National Center for Education Statistics, and the IPED survey contact. Welcome to all of you. And now to begin the webinar, I would like to turn the floor over to Mary Jane Petrowski. Mary Jane, please go ahead. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you all could join us to today. It looks like we have a full house. Um, here you see um, the agenda for today's uh, talk. And before we get into the nuts and bolts of all the changes, um, we're just going to take a quick look. Um, and I'll talk to you, say, just a few words about the ACRL Academic Library Trends and Statistics Survey. Um, I first of all want to thank uh, all the institutions that participated in our 2014 survey. We had a 43% participation rate, and we are looking to increase that rate this year with your help. Um, we have published our 2014 survey results in ACRL metrics along with our longitudinal data, uh, which includes the NCS academic library survey data going back to 1998. And for the first time last year, we gave respondents the ability to input and download their iPads responses. And over 200 um, institutions took advantage of this new feature. The good news is that for our 20, with our 2015 survey, um, all respondents and participants can download their iPads responses and send those to their local key holder or upload them into iPads directly um, if you are a key holder. And I want to thank Bob Dugan and his leadership of the ACRL Academic Library Trends and Statistics Editorial Board um, because the 2015 survey now will also include important benchmarking questions from the former NCES Academic Library Survey as well as a trends questionnaire on collection budgets, institutional repositories, and digital collections. So I hope everyone will participate this year. And if you haven't received an invitation to contribute, please contact our survey administrator at Counting Opinions by email or phone as indicated above. And now I'd like to turn the podium over to, to Martha. Hello. Uh, as uh, you heard uh, from Mary Jane, um, you know both ACRL and ARL have their um, annual surveys out uh, in the field collecting data. And of course, we have an interest in seeing consistent definitions uh, across the board uh, at the national level. 
and uh, that's why we wanted to um, to see the iPads definitions um, align uh, with our established practices. The ARL statistics is the longest running library data series in higher education. Uh, goes beyond any of our lifetimes back to 1908, uh, known as the Gerald statistics. And currently the 2014-2015 survey is open uh, for uh, our member libraries. The uh, history of the survey, of course, has uh, influenced uh, the academic uh, library statistics field above and beyond our member libraries and uh, our established definitions over the years uh, have uh, been incorporated in um, many other academic surveys including national surveys. Uh, we did uh, uh, transform the definitions and the survey a bit a couple of years ago. Uh, this is an evolutionary transformation process that uh, uh, we have to maintain as uh, our libraries are changing our national instruments of capturing uh, the way we describe our libraries need to change. And at the same time, uh, the, the iPads, um, as we will hear, was, uh, was changing and uh, some of the definitions there were not fully aligned with our established practices. Uh, therefore, uh, our, the work we are going to be reporting to you today. In addition to uh, the, uh, managing the ARL statistics here at the Association of Research Libraries, I also chair uh, NISO, National Institute for Standards Organization, uh, Standing Committee, uh, the Standing Committee that's responsible for uh, maintaining the uh, standard known as Z39.7. It's a data dictionary where all the definitions from all the national surveys come together and uh, are being compiled. Actually, we do have a teleconference next uh, mon uh, Monday, November 9 at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for those of you who want to learn more about the uh, Z39.7 uh, data dictionary. Now, um, the uh, the need to um, align the definitions uh, at the national level uh, was really what drove the key goal for the joint task force. So we wanted iPads, the academic libraries component definitions, to um, to. Uh, incorporate and reflect established practices. And as um, you will hear, the goal is achieved. And I will pass the floor here to Bob Dugan. Thank you. What we ended up doing, um, ACRL uh, with the um, Trends and Stats Board was working um, to track comments that were coming in from the academic library community um, as early as September of 2014 in terms of questions that were coming in concerning the, um, uh, the iPad, so the academic libraries uh, component, uh, the AL component uh, survey. And we were tracking questions and answers and, and corresponding through either email or phone calls with Bao Li at, um, at iPads to, to get answers. And then I was able to, through a LibGuide, um, keep up, uh, compile a kind of um, uh, frequently asked questions aspect um, of questions and answers uh, related to the uh, AL component. Um, and then in January of 2015 at the ALA um, midwinter in Chicago, I was able to, um, I was invited by ARL to attend the ARL assessment forum um, in which Elizabeth uh, Edwards and uh, David Larson from the University of Chicago uh, made a presentation about some of the definitional issues that were coming up um, in the iPads um, uh, survey. And um, at that point when we looked at that, we said, well, wait a minute, we, we're, we're, we have the similar if not identical questions 
Um, that was a line from the ACRL uh, stats board and from, um, from the ARL assessment form, and that we should look at, um, at pulling this together so that we're, we're, not, we're asking the, the, the questions and not overwhelming um, iPads with you know, a bunch of the, asking the same question 20 different times. So fortunately, um, we got together and we formed um, a, um, a task force. And the members of the task force are listed here on the, um, on the uh, uh, PowerPoint slide. I know that um, Terry Fischel is, is on the line, or she's, she's attending. Steve Hiller is attending. Court Martha is here. David is also here. Bao is um, from, um, from NCS is, is here. Um, and then Mary Jane. And the, the other party that was involved with this was the um, American Library Association Office of Research and Statistics, which, which of course um, uh, manages, also works with the public libraries in that. So it, it helped when we were um, working with the, um, with the creation of identifying the issues and then, and then working to get some answers. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bob Fox for the, how the, the task force um, worked. Our task force was formed in April 2015, and this gave us a very tight time frame to produce a set of recommendations. Um, so we uh, launched right into the planning process very quickly. In, uh, starting in, in April, the task force leadership held three conference calls where we identified known issues with existing iPad definitions. And a number of these uh, concerns had built up over time as they worked their way up to us through individuals at uh, various ARL and ACRL institutions. Beginning in mid-May, we rolled the calls out to the full task force, and we had a total of five conference calls uh, between mid-May and June 3rd. We issued our first draft, or internally at least, on June 15th. Uh, it was a working draft. Based on that draft, uh, then a number of us met in Washington, D.C. in person at ARL headquarters uh, to work through and finalize those recommendations, and Bao Lee with NCES was at that meeting. Uh, with all the feedback we had to that point from the various members, we did issue what was our second draft, and we uh, shared it very widely within the academic library community because we wanted to solicit uh, feedback for that. We also took advantage of the ALA annual conference in San Francisco to host some information and feedback sessions, and you see two of them listed here. One was uh, held during the ARL assessment forum, and then ACRL also held an iPads update at that time. After ALA, we held two more conference calls, one on July 6th and one on July 7th. And at those calls, we reviewed and discussed the feedback that we had received to that point. And then you see as of July 9th, that was the last day for public comments. So taking all the feedback we had received through the various channels, uh, we did produce a final set of recommendations. And on July 14th, we sent those to the IPED uh, Academic Library Survey Director. And on July 23rd, we were notified that those recommendations had been accepted. So with that, I'm going to turn it over at this point to Chris Cody, who's going to discuss the changes to the survey that were actually incorporated. Okay, thank you. Today, um, based on the recommendations of the Joint Task Force, I'm going to walk us through the changes of the 2015-16 Academic Library Survey that will open for collection on December 9th uh, of this year. I'll begin by going through the changes for Section 1 of the survey. Uh, this includes library collections and circulation. This section is to be filled out by every institution that states they have a library expenditures greater than zero dollars. So looking at the individual recommendations and how IPEDS um, updated the survey to reflect the recommendations, the first task force recommendation was based on the issue from that the 2014-15 AL survey component regarding digital and electronic books, in which iPad's definition of ebooks selected versus ebooks as being a database did not always align with current practices. 
The issues that determine what constitutes an ebook based on selection method did not make sense in the context of contemporary collection development practices. Uh, based on the recommendation from the task force, iPads in 2015-16 will now ask that you report ebook titles owned or leased by the library if individual titles are cataloged and or searchable through the library catalog or discovery system. Provided on the slide is a link to examples of discovery systems. The second task force recommendation for digital electronic books was based on the issue for, from the 2014-15 AL survey component in which iPads was counting ebooks in terms of, new, of the number of simultaneous users. The issue here is that it was difficult to provide an accurate collection count based upon simultaneous users. Uh, based on the recommendation from the task force, iPads in 2015-16 now will ask that you report ebook titles in aggregated sets in which the library selected the aggregator even if not each individual ebook title. Also, here you will count ebook titles as the equivalent of one volume regardless of the number of users. You will also report the number at the ministry level and not duplicate unit count for each branch. And here you will not include titles in demand-driven acquisitions or patron-driven acquisitions collections unless they have been purchased or leased by the library. The third task force recommendation for digital and electronic books was based on the issue from the 2014-15 AL survey component on how iPads asked data providers to report open access titles as part of their collections. Based on the recommendation from the task force, iPads will now ask that um, open access titles are included in digital and electronic books if the individual titles are searchable through the library's catalog or discovery system. The fourth task force recommendation for digital and electronic books um, in the AL survey component was that government doc documents were excluded as e-documents. Um, so based off the task force recommendation, we will now ask in the most upcoming survey that you report government e-documents when you count government documents for digital and electronic books. Count government e-documents within the digital electronic book collection if they are cataloged and again searchable through the library catalog or discovery system. Now moving on to changes for, from in the survey component for physical books and media. The first task force recommendation for physical books and media was based on the issue from the, the survey component in 2014-15 in which microfilm forms, maps, and non-print materials are excluded from the count of physical materials and not included anywhere else. So based on the task force recommendation, we now ask that the institutions report microforms and cartographic materials in the physical media count since they are in the library's collection. Um, here, media materials are reported by title, and cartographic materials are defined in the iPads glossary um, when you fill out the survey component. Moving on to digital and electronic media changes. Um, the first task force recommendation for digital and electronic media is based on the issue from the 2014 survey component in which, again, maps and non-print materials are neither included nor excluded from the digital and electronic counts. So based off this task force recommendation, iPads will now ask in the next survey that, you, that institutions report digital cartographic material in the digital and electronic media account. Similar to the second recommendation uh, regarding digital electronic books, the task force also asked for digital electronic media that based on the issue from the survey component, iPads was counting ebooks in terms of the number of simultaneous users for this section as well. Again, the issue here was that it's difficult to provide an accurate collection count based on simultaneous users. So the new survey um, coming out this year will now ask that you report titles of e-media materials on or leased by the library if the individual titles are cataloged and or searchable through the library catalog discovery system. Again, here you'll report e-media titles in the aggregated sets in which the library selected the aggregator, even if not each individual title. You'll, not re or you'll report the number at the administrator level, but do not duplicate until count for each unit count for each branch. And do not count image databases in this category. Count as, and do not include titles in DDA or PDA collections until they have been purchased or leased by the library. Moving on to changes to databases, um, the only task force recommendation for databases was based on the issue from the 
um, 2014-15 survey in which there was confusion on how to report databases on the survey. The task force wanted clarification on definition and what to count as databases. So based on the recommendation from the task force, we asked in the upcoming survey that in regards to databases, institutions report the total number of licensed digital and electronic databases in your collection if there is a bibliographic or discovery access to the database level, at the database level. Each database should be counted individually. Even access to several databases is supported through the vendor interface. Do not include discovery systems in the count of databases. Do not include individual releases such as annual updates of content or the migration of the user interface to the next vendor release as separate databases. In terms of circulation, the first task force recommendation was based on an issue from the previous survey component in which the term circulation does not accurately reflect what iPads is seeking to measure. As it is used in libraries, the concept of circulation is primarily applied to transactions in which library materials are linked to library users over the circulation desk when the library is physically open. However, much of the use of library collections is now conducted through electronic transactions in which usage is a more accurate term in understanding use of digital and electronic resources. So based on this recommendation, in 2015-16, the IBIS survey form will still have circula circulation as the label for the metric, but in the instructions refer to physical in terms of circulation, circulation and digital electronic in terms of circulation and usage. Um, shown on the slide is an example how it will appear in the actual survey component when you fill out the survey where uh, usage and circulation is labeled and then where just individually circulation is labeled. Again, in terms of circulation, there was uh, two additional recommendations from the task force. Um, the first was in which circulation included the count of non-returnable interlibrary loan items, included reserve collections with general collections, and included renewals. In terms of non-returnable interlibrary loan items, um, the issue was very few libraries consider them as circulations as these transactions are often counted in interlibrary loans, um, so they felt a change needed to be made. Also in terms of circulation, the issue was that including reserve collection and renewal co renewals and general collections, there was some variety in the local policies for how the, both renewals and reserves were viewed. So based off this understanding and the recommendation from the task force, IPES now regarding circulation asks that you report the total number of times physical items are checked out from their general collection, include only initial checkouts, exclude interlibrary loan lending and borrowing, include transactions of media, books and media, and do not include transactions of equipment or computers. However, circulation of electronic reading devices can be included if the device is preloaded with an e-book. Moving on to digital electronic circulation, the first task force recommendation was based on a previous survey's issue that we were not counting transactions of digital electronic databases. Much of academic library usage is digital electronic, and so there felt a need to be included in the circulation count. So based off this recommendation, the, the upcoming survey asks that institutions report usage of digital electronic titles, whether viewed, downloaded, or streamed. This includes uses for e-books and e-media titles only, even if the title was purchased as part of a database. Um, do not include usage of titles in DDA or PDA collections until they have been purchased or leased by the route library. And do not include transaction of VHS, CDs, or DVDs as a transaction of these materials are reported under physical circulation. Again, looking at digital electronic circulation, uh, another recommendation from the task force was based off the issue that the survey component did not identify a method for a library to collect circulation usage of electronic resources. To resolve this issue, IPEDS identifies counter in the AL component of the upcoming survey as a source of usage data for ebooks and media only. The definition of counter reports for ebooks are provided on the slide. Regarding counter, if counter reports are available, iPads suggest that libraries report counts from BR1 and MR1. If BR1 and MR1 statistics are not available, BR2 and MR2 statistics can be used. However, in cases where vendors do not provide counter reports, 
The libraries may report using other means for monitoring digital electronic circulation uses, such as downloads, session reviews, transaction logs, and et cetera. So those were the changes to definitions and instructions for the first section, uh, the AL component. Um, looking now, we're going to be going through the changes for the second section of the survey that includes library expenditures and interlibrary services. This section is filled out by institutions that state they have library expenditures greater than $100,000. There's only one task force recommendation for Section 2 based off the issue of the previous survey component. The issue was in all other expenditures for this section st it stated, if items in this section are not paid from the library budget, they can be easily identified in other parts of the institution's budget, report them here. The task force recommend this should also be reported in sal salaries and wages. So in the upcoming AL component, the, uh, we now ask that institutions report salary and wages before deductions for all full-time and part-time library staff, including student assistant wage and federal workday students wage from the library budget and all other institutional sources that are identifiable. So there were also some overall changes to the AL survey from the 2014-15 to the 2015-16 um, survey component. Some changes were based on recommendations from the task force. Others were based on issues or results um, that the NCS staff noticed from the 2014-15 survey. So we'll go over a few of those changes as well for the upcoming survey. The first overall change deals with the screener questions that determine if an institution fills out the AL component on what and what parts. In 2014-15, the screener question for institution was based on them reporting total library expenditures in the institutional characteristics header survey to determine eligibility if their institution filled out the academic library survey. This practice resulted in institutions reporting estimated AL expenditures, which sometimes required amendments when the final expenditures were known. In some cases, the misreported data in the fall collection from the IC header survey a result in the wrong form assigned for the spring reporting for the AL component. So in order to fix this issue, in 2015-16, two screener questions are provided. One in the institutional characteristics header survey to determine the institution's eligibility for AL components, and a second one in the AL component to determine the institutional eligibility for section two of the AL component. So first, a yes-no question is asked regarding whether library expenditures are greater than zero in the IC header during fall collection? If the answer to this question is yes, then based off this, the institution will receive the AL component to the survey. And then regarding the screener question in the AL component, uh, this question asks that if expenditures were greater than 100,000, um, if the institution asks, answers yes to this, then they will receive section two of the survey to ask more detailed questions on expenditures uh, for the academic libraries. The next slide here just shows the two screener questions that will be asked uh, in the upcoming survey. Um, the first one is the will be included in institutional characteristics header survey, um, as I said, regarding if they receive the AL component or not. And then the second will be actually on the AL's um, academic library survey to determine if they receive section two of the survey. Another overall change uh, to the 2015-16 survey, an overall survey recommendation that came from the task force was regarding the issue from the 2014-15 survey where libraries did not have, an, have a not applicable choice. This was an issue because not all libraries have responses to questions asked on the survey. So based on the task force recommendations and the limitations of our data collection, the 2015-16 survey will not ask the institutions uh, we'll now ask the institutions to please respond to each survey or item in the survey. If the appropriate answer for an item is zero or none, or if materials provided and counts are not manageable, you will answer the question with zero. However, now if the material is not provided or if expenses are not applicable, you can, will leave the item blank. This here will count as a not applicable answer for the survey. So we, you still not be provided with a blank as not applicable. You will now just leave the survey um, answer blank to define your choice of NA. So 
so those are all the changes for the 2015-16 survey. A few things we're going to move on to now is talk about possible changes to the 2016-17 Academic Library Survey. And we're currently beginning our process for a review on survey changes through the Office of Management and Budget. And so I'm going to go over a few of the proposed changes that we're going to be making this year. The first change for the 2016-17 survey that we're discussing are adding an additional screener question to the institutional characteristics header. Uh, of which it asks, does your institution have access to a library collection? So in the uh, upcoming survey, we, de we determine eligibility as a previously stated for the AL component based off institutions having, having library expenses greater than zero. This practice has allowed institutions that do not have library expenses but do actually have library collections being ineligible to complete the AL component. So what we are proposing asking institutions is an additional screening question that says, does your institution have access to a library co collection? So if the data providers answer yes to this AL screening question or answers yes to both questions, um, then the institution will be eligible for the AL component. A second possible change for the 2016-17 survey we are considering making is changing the question about academic libraries and the institutional characteristics surveys from does your institution have its own library or are you financially supporting a shared library with another post-secondary education institution to which of the following library resources or services does your institution provide to its clientele? Check all that applies, physical facilities, an organized collection of print materials, access to digital electronic resources, a staff trained to provide and interpret library materials, established library hours, and access to library collections that are shared with another institution. The, de the changes detailed here allow data providers to report all aspects of an academic library that are accessible to the institution. Also, the proposed change aligns the library question in the institutional characteristics survey component to IPED's definition of an academic library. Based on other discussions with the task force, IPEDS is also considering for the 2016-17 survey adding a serials row to the library's collection and circulation. Um, provided on the slide is a definition of what a serial uh, would be uh, regarding um, the collection for the 2016-17 survey. Also, uh, finally, based on discussion with the task force, IPEDS is considering moving the following from Section 2 to Section 1 in the 2016-17 survey. We're discussing moving interlibrary, interlibrary services, the questions regarding total interlibrary loans and documents provided to other libraries, and the question regarding total interlibrary loans and documents received. Um, we're move, planning to move this from Section 2 to Section 1. Uh, section 2 questions are more aligned with library expenditures and Section 1 questions are more aligned with library collections. We propose moving this, the questions associated with interlibrary services to Section 1 of the survey since they are more related to library collections. This would also allow everyone that receives the AL component, not just people who receive the second section of the AL component, to fill out this, this information. Also, based off task force recommendations uh, for the 2016-17 survey, we're proposing deleting the following question from Section 2. Does your library support virtual references services? It's a yes or no question. Uh, the joint task force proposed eliminating this question due to the fact that almost every library now provides some means of virtual reference services, and so they're deeming the question somewhat outdated. And then finally, another area of change we are discussing with the task force. It will not be we are not planning on implementing this into 2016-17 survey collection. Uh, but it's something we'll present today and um, we'll have future discussions about. As, uh, we're t discussing adding uh, a not shared and share column to the digital electronic materials of library collections in Section 1 of the AL component. Since digital electronic collections, um, books, databases, serials, and me media are not always accessible within, in within an institution but also across institutions, it is important to account for what items are shared and not shared. So adding a shared and not shared column to the digital electronic column of library collections will capture additional information on how institutions are sharing resources. It will also allow data providers to more accurately report all aspects of their library collections. 
However, this is something we are still discussing um, with the task force, and so there's no plans uh, to currently propose it in the 2016 changes with our OMB package, and just something that I want to present today, give you an example of on the slide, and we'll let you know that we'll be having discussions about this in the future. And I believe that um, all the changes and possible future changes um, for the survey component um, that we're planning to implement of the, uh, for the collection coming up in December and then a future collection in 2016-17. I think we'll now turn it over to what's next for the task force. We have uh, our script has Mary Jane Petrovsky covering that. Mary Jane, are you there? Yes. Um, so as you see here, we've still got a little bit uh, more work to do. Um, we are going to pull the academic library community um, to see if there is additional data that they would like to um, incorporate into the, to the iPad survey. Um, we're going to review the publish. Uh, or otherwise made available data from the first academic library component. Um, I'm not sure what the timeline is for that, but as soon as that's available, we'll be taking uh, a look uh, at that. And uh, I do see questions coming in. Um, Bao Li has been responding to a number of them. Uh, so please type if you have more questions in the chat box in the lower left corner of the screen. Uh, let's see, we can answer some uh, also by voice. Bao, are you on the line? Maybe you are muted or maybe. Um, so one of the questions from uh, uh, Stephanie Wittenbach, oh, where are archival materials counted? Um, I don't see them. Um, anyone on the call wants to take that? Bao, are you still online? Dugan, Bob Fox, how, how would you answer this question? Where are archival materials counted? Uh, this is Dugan. It depends on, on I, I've noticed that there are a couple of questions coming about the ACRL survey, and then there's other questions related to the AL component. Um, it depends on the nature of, of the archival material. Uh, is the is the archival material from a, from the AL component um, is the archival material in print or is it electronic? Um, if it's in print, it, it may be underneath the, the print books. If it's electronic, it would probably be underneath uh, the electronic media. Uh, depends on on the format. Um, and um, I'm trying to see. I can't. I'm, I'm having trouble looking at that and talking at the same time. But um, it, it depends on. It's going to really from the AL component side. It looks like to me it's going to depend on the um, format. Um, same thing kind of goes with the ACRL survey. Um, the definitions are are um, fairly robust there. Um, we don't separate out archival material other than um, we do have questions about institutional repositories on the, um, on the ACRL 2015 survey. So that you may look at it as, as coming from uh, the IR, the institutional repository, or it, it, again, it depends upon what is the format or what is the, what is the, um, yeah, what's the format of the material. Yeah, she w she's clarifying, Stephanie Woodenbach clarifying that she's asking about manuscript materials, specifically not books. And uh, of course, those are usually boxed, as an, uh, another person indicates, and counted in linear feed. Um, yeah. And uh, right now, we do not have a question about uh, archival materials in linear feed in the iPad survey. 
and we and we did not have that in the um, in the ACRL 2015 survey either. Um, one of the things that we should point out um, from from both the ACRL 2015 survey and the and the AL component is that neither survey is designed to measure all library activity. Um, however. The ACRL 2015, or it's, as we look at developing the 2016 survey for um, that will be released in about a well, released in 10 months. We, if this is if this is something that that um, academic librarians think we should capture, then we would certainly look at um, a section or a couple of, of questions on the ACRL survey that would would seek to measure. Uh, this type of, um, of material, the archival material in, in linear feet, um, or however you think it should be counted. On the ACRL 2015 survey, towards the end of the, of the survey document, there is a question that asks you, do you want or do you recommend or do you suggest any other data elements for inclusion? That is a perfect place to put those kind of questions, and the, um, the ACRL uh, Trends and Statistics Editorial Board will certainly look at that for expansion or inclusion in the next survey um, for uh, 2016. Yeah. So right now, it's, you know, a couple of other uh, people are chatting. Uh, they can be counted as titles. Uh, we do not have the linear feed, uh, but they can be counted titles as long as they are cataloged or as long as they are discoverable. Um, and of course, yes, they are a significant component of a library's collection. Um, there, there has been actually uh, quite a bit of inquiry regarding um, uh, titles in institutional repositories uh, in our interactions for the, uh, with our constituency. Uh, the ARL libraries, the research libraries, and uh, we have been uh, uh, describing the issue in a couple of, um, of phone calls uh, we've had uh, with um, libraries that are asking questions about that. And uh, we plan to create a blog entry and, and um, initiate a discussion where people can crowdsource their views on um, on how to report some of uh, of the titles from the institutional repositories, uh, you know, when they are cataloged in your library catalog, of course, the solution is is um, is obvious. But um, oftentimes, there are collections that are not cataloged, um, and they only exist in the institutional repository. Um, we have a few more thing, comments coming. Um, there is Steve Hiller, from, who is actually the U.S. representative to ISO, the International Standards Organization, points out that ISO is currently working on a standard for archives statistics. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Pamela Price is asking, under what category heading will library data appear in the final report? Is it still under student services or will it move to another category? I'm trying to get a handle on what categories library data might move to. That's, that's, a, that's a question for, um, this is Dugan, that's a question for um, Bao and, um, and Chris Cody. If I'm understanding the question correctly, in our data center, it will be under its own academic libraries uh, category. It will be uh, separate from uh, all the other surveys where you can actually drop down and um, go into the data center and pull the data for academic libraries and for institutions directly um, by just looking at the, um, the our academic library section. Yes, the press release uh, we. We had uh, had a link to uh, the iPads uh, surveys, and the academic library survey, as Chris said, is listed at the very end, and it's on its own. Um, also, there was a previous question about when the uh, iPads data for the 2014-15 survey will be coming out. Um, we're expecting that out to come out in um, early uh, to late November. So it should be out soon. Great. Thank you. 
um, Ashley Muffin just saw this and then it moved. Have they, uh, is asking a question. Mac uh is asking a question. Have there been any discussions of breaking more formal library instruction from presentations to groups? And uh, I'm going to add to this because I have received inquiries about uh, research consultations uh, and whether we want to track research consultations as a separate category. Uh, thoughts on, on this topic from any people on the call? Um, this is Dugan. We we are we do have a a, re, a, a different uh, definition in the uh, ACRL 2015 survey related to um, consultations uh, in terms of reference transactions, and the second part is the breakdown or further breakdown to presentations to groups um, in terms of breaking out instruction. Uh, this is the second time um, that I've heard this, that this request has been made. And any time I hear things a second time, it really moves up quickly onto the agenda. So um, I think that that's something that, um, that we'll take a look at for the 2016 survey. Again, I encourage you to, uh, as Terry Fischel has responded on the chat, uh, in, um, on the ACRL 2015 survey line uh, 80, um, number 80, um, if you want to include that as a comment back to us. Uh, we will be, um, we'll be looking at everything that comes back to that. And I think that's a good idea. I think as, <clears throat> as we um, do these surveys, um, the, AL, uh, the ACRL survey and the IPED survey, you can see that we're evolving um, in terms of trying to uh, capture best practices and, and capture those type of data elements that are important to academic libraries. So please um, use that box on line number 80 in order to let us know other data elements you would like us to consider. Uh, so a couple of other uh, questions because we skipped a few that were um, um, asked earlier. Um, the Kathleen, Kathleen Bell, um, what um, will data collected for the last survey be made publicly available? Okay, yes, you did answer that, Chris. And then Karen Locker is uh, saying, it's unclear to me, is least the same thing as subscription? From, from, this is Dugan. From the ACRL perspective, um, yes, lease is the same as subscribe. And Sandy Rosado is asking, we do not track serial circulation. Will not applicable be an option when that is added? Um, that is something we're still working on with our LMB submission. I'm assuming as of now that it will be the option to leave it blank. So which would be a not applicable. Mm -hmm. um, during Q&A, Constance Malpat is, is asking, during uh, the Q&A, could iPad staff address the deletion of Section 2 question regarding owned slash shared academic library? How will outsourced slash shared library infrastructure be tracked? This is likely to be an important arrangement, especially for two-year and some smaller four-year institutions going forward. This is the new uh, concept that uh, IPEDS is thinking for adding in 2016-17, the concepts of um, shared. So if something uh, is completely outsourced, how would how could iPad handle that? We will still be tracking that. If something's completely outsourced, there will be, uh, I'm guessing the way they're saying that is there will be a parent-child relationship set up in the iPad's um, system. And so that's how we will identify that. And then the parent will report the data for the child institution or child library in a sense. And then the ratios will define how much of that is allocated to uh, the child academic library compared to the parent academic library, but that if that's how they're if what they're all discussing in all versus shared, we'll still capture that in the parent child relationships. 
and it will be a shared collection, correct? The outsourced yes. collection. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Am I forgetting anything? Anybody else tracking that? There is one question at the end whether IRL will ever ask iPads to include a question on libraries digitized collections. I think the challenge is they are defining what's a digitized collection. Anybody would like to take a stab at it? Um, this is Dugan. I think I think that uh, <coughs> I think the task force should take a stab at it. Okay, continuing on the track of the outsourced uh, uh, library services, Constance Malpas is, has a follow-up question, but what if the provider is not an academic library? For example, a public library providing services to an academic institution. Um, and regarding that question, that, uh, that the, there'll be an open a comment period for this question. Will be going through our OMB submission package. We'll inform uh, inform the task force of when that comment period opens um, for that question and all the other question changes for 2016-17. And so it's this type of feedback that we'll be in, uh, considering. And possibly, as of now, it's just a suggestion that we change that. But um, Based off, you know, this example, it might be something we consider also leaving in. Um, so that would be something I'll bring back uh, to our NCS team and discuss a little further regarding public libraries providing services to an academic institution in terms of sharing and, and at keeping that question in. Also, I think Melissa had a question: Why will blank equal NA instead of having a third option to type NA? That actually has to deal with our internal data center and how we um, upload and migrate data over. Um, and how it's, uh, the functionality is for us to move that data over, we need to have blank equal NA um, instead of having that third option. Excellent. I think we may be exhausting the questions in the chat box. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, the, I, I think it's worth uh, repeating again uh, the fact uh, that you just, what you just mentioned, Chris, that uh, the new items that will go for OMB approval for the 2016-17 survey will be available for commentary. Um, can you give us a brief description of how that that process will move forward? Well, I, I'm new to the process, but um, how I, I think I'll disseminate it through all the associations, and then you can uh, let your um, constituents know. And what it will be, you'll be able to any one public person will be or pu person will be able to go on its a public website and add um, comments on uh, concerns or issues or suggestions, and then we will comment back. And then, depending on the comments we receive, it could influence how uh, those changes are um, submitted. Uh, and continued for the 2016-17 survey. Um, but with this one issue raised, I'll probably go ahead and bring it back to the NCCS staff now and discuss it a little bit further. Wonderful. Uh, so th one last thing, mm -hmm. I would like um, for uh, the institutions um, filling out the iPad survey uh, that's opening up in December 9th, I'd like to remind everyone um, that we have on our website, and you'll have it on your survey as you fill it out, the uh, help desk. That, so any additional questions that come up regarding any survey component or item, um, you can call our help desk or contact them. And usually they have uh, an expanded information on how to fill out a survey. And if not, then it gets risen to, well, to the NCES staff. Um, also, all our information is online that you can contact us directly if needed. Yes. I would like to thank you, Cody and Bao Li and Bob Dugan and Bob Fox and Mary Jane Petrovsky and uh, Amy Yeager. And uh, we are receiving uh, thanks from our participants in the chat box too. Thank you everybody for attending this webcast. It will be available on the ARL YouTube channel next week. Goodbye.